Hey everyone, uh, I next want to talk about how to do hypothesis testing by hand. And for this, we're going to start out by looking at the rain, uh, rendered uh, LaTeX math. So we're going to start out by considering a simple z-test where uh, we assume that we know what the population standard deviation is, or sigma, which, um, uh, believe it or not, this isn't as ridiculous as it is initially seems like i've always been saying uh or we've always been saying statisticians always say you don't really know sigma so that's something you have to estimate but actually when you get to situations such as tests for proportion those are essentially a z test and if you know uh what the proportion is under the null hypothesis then actually you do know sigma too so uh, it's actually not that ridiculous in certain circumstances, although that is a situation where you really truly are assuming, well, well, you're really truly invoking the central limit theorem rather than assuming that your data came from a normal distribution, in which case the test is exact. Um, well, if you're using the central limit theorem, though, the, st the test will not be exact. It's based on asymptotic results, which means that it, it's going to work for large sample sizes. In small sample size situations, you shouldn't use it. All right, so uh, our, we're testing for the location of the mean under the, under the null hypothesis. The true mean is mu naught. Uh, by the way, um, mu naught is a, going to be a number. Like down here, mu naught is 12. But here, we're saying that mu, we're, we're kind of viewing this as being more formulaic. So the true mean, which is unknown, this should be read as a sentence. Uh, the true mean is mu naught, which is going to be a number in the end. Uh, the alternative says either the true mean is less than mu naught, the true mean is not equal to mu naught, or the true mean is greater than mu naught. Uh, the test statistic is going to be z, which is x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over the square root of n. And we would discuss in the lecture part of Math 3070 uh, why this is, but the p-value will be uh, either phi of z if the alternative says that mu is less than mu naught, 2 times 1, one minus phi uh, applied at the absolute value of z if the null if the alternative says that mu is not equal to mu naught by the way phi is the cdf of the standard normal distribution and if the alternative says that mu is greater than mu naught then the p value will be one minus phi of z so um let's demonstrate by testing whether the diameter of black cherry trees is 12 inches i test the hypotheses or decide between the hypotheses h naught which says that uh, the true mean diameter is 12 inches, and the alternative says that the true mean is not equal to 12 inches. I have decided a priori that I want a significance level of alpha equals 0.05, and I'm going to assume that the population standard deviation is 3. All right. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, compute the sample mean of the tree's girth. Here's what the sample mean is. Uh, the sample size is um, going to be n row this trees data frame. So if we look at trees, this is what it looks like. All right, so um, uh, the null hypothesis says that the mean is 12, so mu naught will be 12. Uh, sigma is going to be 3. And then I compute this test statistic with x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over the square root of n. Here is the test statistic, which is often of interest in and of itself. And here I compute the p-value using that uh, formula for the case where the alternative hypothesis is two-sided. And here is the resulting p-value. So this p-value is less than 0.05, uh, which was my pre-specified significance level. Therefore, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. If my p-value were greater, if my p-value were, um, well, actually, if my alternative no, sorry, sorry, I can't seem to talk. If my alpha were set to 0.01 instead, then I would not have rejected the null hypothesis since my p-value would have exceeded that level alpha. So you can actually interpret the p-value as being the maximum level of significance at which you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, that's one nice interpretation of what it means. Uh, so, all right, so that's it for the manual method. At this point, we should probably start uh, using R as more than just a glorified calculator, but as an actual tool for performing statistics. That's going to be the subject of the next video, and I will see you there.